think and and how they act on their different thoughts so we have a great guest to talk to us about this he's written a book called seven mindsets of success what you really need to do to achieve rapid top level success stan morgan is the guest um stan is a financial guru and the founder of legacy investment planning stan good to have you on the show good morning larry thanks for having me good to be here where are you right now i'm in uh, rainy nashville <laughs> it's rainy <laughs> Every, every every place has got oh yeah that's right you got are you just getting the uh the first part of uh cindy yeah that's right the first part of it oh okay so is it going to be worse or is it pretty much the way it is they say it might get a little bit worse so yeah. we'll uh see oh my goodness okay but uh the attitude that i'm assuming you have based on your book is a good attitude so do, have you always been that way have you always had that that uh i'm gonna do this in no matter what are, are you are you good at analyzing your own stuff and figuring out the things you shouldn't do? Uh, I, I think I've gotten much better at it, uh, but I didn't I didn't grow up that way, and I don't think I, I had that naturally. I had a tough situation with a single mom, three sisters. Um, financially, we didn't really have anything, and we moved a lot, and so things were pretty volatile and uncomfortable growing up. So, so my mindset, really, which I believe is shaped by our environment around us, whether we're aware of it or not, was success really doesn't happen to people like us uh wow. no matter how hard you try at some point somebody's going to take advantage of you and um right. they'll they'll succeed but you won't okay and eventually yeah. i realized that um i think i was capable of more than that so it really took just kind of hard well good hard for you to say i want to break out of that oh my gosh I, and i congratulate you for that because this is what i've observed in in people just you know, as an observer of people <laughs> when, when uh somebody is in that mindset it's hard to break out of it when you are a woe is me everybody's gonna beat me kind of a person it's mm -hmm. hard I, I see people their whole lives they never ever ever say you know what i can do this yeah. um but once you can once you break over to that other side it's it's not that people were treating you unfairly is that you were treating yourself unfairly do you agree i agree yeah and we talk about in the book circumstances and, and again i grew up multiple father figures coming in and out of my life and i i had a big chip on my shoulder and it, it took me my early 20s to realize a lot of the stuff i was most mad at and frustrated with i had zero control over <laughs> but it's what i spent 90 percent of my time and energy worrying about and it was just a big distraction. And uh, sometimes people get comfortable in their life situation and they run out of initiative to make themselves better. How do you uh, reach a person like that, that, that they can have more potential than what they're uh, accepting? That's a great question. And, and I, th I think it's this concept of discomfort. And our human nature is going to take us to the path of least resistance. How can we accomplish the most with the least amount of effort? And I think we're all guilty of that at some point. And for me growing up, things were so uncomfortable all the time that my ultimate goal in life was to get comfortable and never leave there. <laughs> <laughs> but I realized that greatness doesn't happen when you're comfortable. And so I had to retrain myself to oh, the thing I had been running away from my whole life was discomfort to actually learn to embrace it. Because the more uncomfortable you get, there's a direct correlation to how successful you can be. Do you think that's always true? Do you think, uh, what's what's Trump's son's name, the, the young guy? Barron? Barron. Do you think Barron, Barron, yep. Barron Trump is going to grow up to be, have the, the successful attitude? I mean, see, he's surrounded by success. I, I think, again, gr him growing up the way he is and, and the way I grew up when I was, different situations. Yeah, really. He's being shaped by his. I was being shaped by mine that... The hope is, and, and you mentioned this earlier, that really successful people can be very self-aware, is that if somebody coaches him at some point to say, hey, that, that is your story, that was your family, take the good and leave the bad, I think he can overcome that like all of us can overcome. I like, in the book, I like how you have a very simple, easy-to-understand formula, and you use uh, how am I going to go to New York as the, the, as the, uh, the simple goal. Okay, the, the goal is get to New York. And you throw in an extra step. Could you explain that to the listeners, please? I, I think a lot of people spend time telling people, envision your goal. What, what do you want to do? And, and they might say, I want to start a business. I want to have a family. I want to do great things. But the, the real question, that's not the hard part. The real question is, are you willing to do what it takes to accomplish that? So when I speak to groups and I coach other advisors, it's, hey, of course you want to produce and have great clients and make a big impact. But do you have a, a realistic expectation of what that's going to take, and are you willing to do it? 
I think that's where people really get hung up. Do you know the, there's one area, and you're in the heart of it, right there in Nashville. And uh, if you are, uh, if you are setting a goal for yourself that you're going to be the next big music star, um, quite often you can put all, all the hard work. I mean, we've seen dozens of people, more than dozens, who put in the hard work, who have the talent, who've got the looks, who've got everything going for them, and for one reason or another, it just doesn't come together. Now, comment on that if you could, because I'm thinking that success in in the broad sense is probably achievable by anybody, but success in the narrow sense, like I'm going to be the next big football player or I'm going to next be the next American Idol, that probably needs some rethinking. I would think. I don't know. What do you What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm a big advocate of realistic goals, but also stretch goals. Um, when I was 20 in the situation I was in, I, I'd never thought at 30 I'd be one of the top 40 under 40 financial advisors in the country. Um, people from Elmira, Oregon don't do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think at one point I would have said, there's no way I'm going to be a country star. And I think that's some, some of the stories of the most successful ones. So kind of that tenacity and resilience. Um, we need to gain perspective from others, which means if I came to Nashville and I went to some of the top songwriters and said, hey, what does it take to be a songwriter? And they say, you need to learn how to play the guitar and sing. And I said, well, I, I'm attractive, but I can't play the guitar or sing. Getting that perspective would say, hey, I might have the look, I might be marketable, but I don't have all the tools. So that's, that's a big chapter in the book is to say, if, if you have a goal, find people that are doing it. And by gaining perspective of what it takes, it'll either strengthen your resolve towards that goal yeah. or it'll reveal that that's not really my goal I really want to do this that's, well, that's yeah and that goes back to what I asked you earlier can you recognize the, the things you need to rethink um, my, my example I always use is the fly in the back window of my car because he keeps thinking he can get through that glass and meanwhile there's an open window just two feet behind him you oh, know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he ends up dying in my back window and, and I think yeah. that, that's me that's me if I don't recognize that it's it's just not working if it's not yeah, working you gotta r- right <laughs> yeah uh, no, I, no I agree yeah the self awareness is huge and I think over time I, I, I've gotten better at it but these mindsets in the book, uh, no one perfects them. There's days where my perspective or discomfort mindset are, are on point and I'm thriving, and other days where I need to reference the chapter again and say, okay, how do I self-correct again? Uh, one of the mindsets you have uh, listed in there is uh, control. You state that people can only control 10% of life, and that's what they should focus on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, life is, is uncertain and, and uncomfortable and difficult at times, and we, we need to try the, our best to say, what can I control? What, what can I do every day to, that's in, intentional action to get me closer to my goal? But I'm going to accept that along the way things are going to happen. So I'm going to let it maybe throw me off for a day, but I'm not going to let it derail me for six months. Not Most here. of us, unfortunately, are doing all of this stuff really passively. We're, we're saying we hope success comes. We're going to kind of work hard, but we, we, th- we think we know what we want to do, but we're not really going to define it and set a good game plan towards it. And some people stumble upon success. It might take them 15, 20 years. But what I'm trying to communicate to people is if you do it the right way, I can move to Nashville knowing nobody and in three to four years be one of the top advisors in the country. You don't have to wait 30 years to be successful. But if you want to do it rapidly and still have quality success, you have to do it the right way. Yeah, and and the right way is often uh, there's evidence of how to do it the right way in people who've done it before you. That's kind of what you're saying. Yep. Wow, I love this. You're a great coach. I, I can just. Uh, do, you, do you have children? That your children are very much. They got a. Uh, do you have children? I have two little girls. Yep. Oh my gosh, they've got a great dad. You, I mean, yeah, my, my wife. My wife makes me turn off coaching mode when I get home, though, because that would annoy the heck out of her every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but when you're driving in the car, you know, taking them to practice or whatever, they're going to say, you know what, and they're going to absorb it. It's, it's going to happen. Hmm. Your, your wife probably absorbs it, too. Um, well, th- thank you for being on the air with us, Stan. Uh, let me see. Yeah, great. I, I got a copy of the book. It's called Seven Mindsets of Success. Call me if you want the copy that was sent to us, and I'll leave it for you on Patsy's desk. I have the book uh, cover on the streaming because he's not in the studio so rather than showing our faces I put Sten's book look at that it's right there All right. Uh, nice. and that'll be a podcast later on Sten then you can share it if you want Do, can you Perfect. direct us to uh, I know I got it from Amazon where, where else can we get the book uh, Amazon's the best place I also have a website stenmorgan.com and there's some other content on there as well 
You got five star reviews. Look at this. Twenty four reviews. Five. Oh, you're a good looking guy. Look at you. I'm related to all of them. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. There you are. Yeah. No, I'm not gay at all. But I'm just saying you're yeah. a good looking guy. Uh, th- thank you. <laughs> thank uh, you. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for being on the air with us, Stan. You bet. We'll be right back. Let's cruise somewhere different. Carol's Trips is planning a seven-day California cruise. From October 15th to October 22nd, round trip from San Francisco aboard the Grand Princess cruise ship. For details and arrangements, call Carol's Trips, 352-787-9253, or visit carols-trips.com. Onboard credits available for veterans. It's time to go. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. (laughs) Number two on the summer danger list is trampolines. Yeah. Try to get insurance if you have a trampoline in your house. Time to amp up our brain power. And did you know that taking an afternoon nap can make you smarter? Only post one picture of your dog, your baby, or a sunset, not a series. Pulitzer Prize winning photojournalist David Hume Kennerly says, quote, I get annoyed when people post 10 pictures of their cat when one would have been enough. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Veterans are the foundation upon which our freedom is built. Listen to The Source WOCA each Thursday at 9 a.m. to Veterans News with Hank Whittier from Vets Helping Vets. You'll hear tributes, information on veterans' issues, and stories that will make you laugh, cry, and feel proud. Veterans News always focuses on the military, past and present, and on our first responders. Veterans News is brought to you each week by Bob Wines Camellia Gardens and Nursery, keeping you blooming since 1952. Robin, how do you like my design? You're designing a box? That's not a box. It's a doghouse. Rough draft for your rough rough? Sounds like you need personal service. I do? Yes, to print the blueprints. See Mark at the Personal Service Center. He can print blueprints, notarize permit applications, print and mail out invoices, 